Hello, it's the 19th of May today um, and I'm up the allotment um, again and what I'm going to do today is I'm going to put in some of my cabbages. I have sown lots of cabbages uh, this year, all sorts of different varieties, um, but these ones uh, are actually the first lot that I sowed uh, way back in like the beginning of March, I think it was. Um, I showed you when I potted them up and they've been sitting in the greenhouse on the allotment for um, about three or four weeks now. And now they're big enough um, to actually go outside. So let me show them to you. They're, they're looking very, very nice. Uh, they're about nine, 10 inches tall now. Um, I've got 36 of them, nine, 18, 20 something, yes, 36 of them to put in. Um, and they can go in um, any time, sort of just before your, your last frost date. Cabbages are quite robust, unless of course it says on the back, wait until, you know, all frost has gone. Um, but cabbages do tend to be fairly robust. So therefore they can, uh, they can go out usually just before, um, your last frost date but do make sure they're big enough if they're too small when they go out they just won't survive um, they are um, very tasty for slugs and snails so again you've got to protect them on the bottom um, round by the bottom on the soil and also the birds like to eat them as well so um, again you're going to have to net them um, when you plant them out in the soil I place mine about a foot apart from each other in whatever direction um, and it, that usually gives them enough space to grow uh, and you don't leave a huge amount of soil exposed therefore weeding is much uh, easier to do because there is less of it. Um, so let me show you how to put these in the soil. Right, so make sure that you've uh, you've cleared your bed, you've got all the weeds out of it. Uh, I did turn this bed over, um, it must have been about a, a week or ten days ago, um, so it's, it's fairly good. If you've got some uh, manure, then put some of that in there because the cabbages will love that as well. So all you need to do is to dig a nice hole, a nice deep hole, and when you place your cabbage in, it can go down slightly deeper than it is in the pot because um, you need to try and get it as sturdy as possible. There's nothing worse than uh, falling over cabbages. So um, let's just look at the roots here. You can see that there's lots of lovely roots um, twizzling around. Um, so they should do really, really well in the soil. Now put it in your soil and all you need to do then is to cover it over, fill up that hole with some more soil and firm it down really well. Like with all brassicas, you really need to firm it down really well like that. Once it's in, you need to give it a good water. and then you'll need to um, protect it from the slugs and snails. I'm just gonna wait for that water to soak through and down before I put any pellets on top. Obviously you can use eggshells, you can use coffee. Uh, dog hair apparently works quite well, but I don't have a dog, so I can't really use that. And I don't drink that much coffee, so um, <laughs> uh, unfortunately um, pellets is the only thing that I can really use. So I'll just sprinkle a few of those over and I'll carry on and do the rest uh, and I'll plant them about a foot apart from each other and when I've done them all then I'll come back and show you. Okay and there they are, all 36 of them in the ground, a foot apart from each other. Um, I've covered them uh, with netting 
Uh, these little things here, I bought these a few years ago. They're actually um, children's hula hoops. Um, I, I ordered some offline and they come in six different sections uh, and you just you, you put them together so I just put three together and they make the perfect size hoop to um, rest the netting on top especially for the cabbages um, obviously you can only use um, these half hoop things if you want uh, if your brassicas are low growing if it's something that that grows much higher then they're they're not any good for but uh, they're they're just perfect and you'll also see I've also um, put some plastic bottles uh, on some of the uh, the canes here. I've put a plastic bottle on the corner of each one um, and these are to first of all um, scare off the birds because the noise that they make um, they scare the birds off and also uh, if I if I or somebody else bends down we don't poke our eye out on the stick. So that's one lot of cabbages in. Uh, the other ones are, are too small but I'll give those another few weeks and then they'll be ready to put out. Uh, but now I'm going to pick the first of the rhubarb. Now this is one of my rhubarb beds. I do have another one uh, which is about the same size. Um, the rhubarb, I don't force the rhubarb. Forcing rhubarb, let me explain what that is. Now, um, some people force rhubarb and some people don't force rhubarb. I don't force my rhubarb. Forcing rhubarb, basically what it means is at the end of the season, when all the leaves have died down, what you do is you put an upturned um, old metal bin, plastic bin, terracotta pot, something, a tall terracotta pot, something that will go over the crown of the rhubarb and you keep it there um, all winter long. Um, and it basically means that the rhubarb will start shooting earlier on um, because it's in a in a warmer climate and it's actually been protected from frost. Now um, when you kind of come to about the spring you then take the upturned um, whatever you've put on top of your um, rhubarb crown and your rhubarb has actually grown um, a couple of feet. Um, now the difference between forced rhubarb, looking at it, forced rhubarb and non-forced rhubarb, is um, forced rhubarb, the stems are very light pink and the leaves are very light green. Non-forced rhubarb, the, um, the stems, the, the stalks of the rhubarb are a very sort of deep pink and the leaves are very dark green. So just by looking at it, you can tell which is which. Um, as far as I know, the flavour is exactly the same, but I'm not somebody who forces rhubarb. I just let it grow um, as it does. Uh, it's very easy to look after is rhubarb. Um, it just needs feeding and watering, thorough watering, especially if it's dry and at the end of every season just whack a load of manure on it and it's as happy as Larry. Okay so um, some people only harvest their rhubarb in like June July time but I'll harvest it um, when it's there. You know it's it's now at the point where I do need to harvest some some because I want to encourage more to grow and I'll keep harvesting it as long as it's still growing. Um, so, you know, you can be harvesting rhubarb for a good three months, if you're lucky, uh, maybe even longer. So, um, I'm going to harvest just some of this, not too much. Um, you should never strip it back completely um, when you, uh, you harvest rhubarb. You should always leave um, a few stems still growing. So, let me show you how to harvest rhubarb. Right, now if we look at this one here, um, you'll see this section here and you'll see this section here. Uh, these were where some of the seed heads were growing. Uh, they're the long, tall ones that produce um, the seeds if you then want to sow rhubarb by seed. Usually when you grow rhubarb, um, you buy a crown um, from <coughs> a garden centre and sow it like that. And it's much quicker and much easier. Um, if you do get any seed heads, just cut them off as low as you can and then just stick them in the compost heap. Now, uh, let's look at, this is obviously a very small one. This isn't uh, ready to harvest yet, neither is this one or that one. But if we look at this one here, uh, there is no specific size that um, your stems have to be, um, you know, 
so that you can harvest them. I mean, this would taste fine. It would taste just as nice as that. All right, but um, it's still got some growing to do, so I, why waste it? Now, when you harvest rhubarb, you need to grab hold of the, um, the stem and you need to pull it back and down okay and then towards you okay so and just it, oh like that it, you need to put in a bit of oomph to sometimes to get them out now you want to make sure that you have this little papery bit and the whole of this section if you find that you haven't you need to get what is left out because if you leave a little section in then um, it will rot and it may well then go down and rot the entire crown and then you'll lose uh, that entire section of rhubarb okay so I'll just pull some more out okay and I'll have that one oh and I think I'll have this one here Ooh, there we are actually and I might have that one. Oh there we go. Now I've left one, two, three, four, five, there's six in here and you can actually see it's actually starting to grow more is more is on its way so um, hopefully that will do really well this year. We'll just cover this up. This is a load of manure I put on at the end of last season so uh, it's very very um, happy now I've given it a load of manure. Now also once you've harvested um, what you want to harvest then it's always then a good opportunity to then weed um, because when the leaves um, are there it's actually very difficult so um, I'm going to harvest a load and I'm also going to take out um, any weeds that I find. Right now the only bit of the rhubarb that you want to use is the stem. The leaves themselves are poisonous okay so um, please make sure you don't ever eat those. Um, if you cut them off and you soak them in um, water for about 24-48 hours they actually make really nice plant food. It can get a bit smelly so do, do be aware of that. Um, or you can just put them in the compost heap and then they'll rot down and then you can put it back on the bed. So um, using either a knife or a pair of secateurs just chop off the leaf and then you're left with that. You can chop off the bottom bit as well because you're not going to use that. And there is one bit of rhubarb. So um, I'll carry on and I'll pick a bit more and then I'll show you what I've got when I'm done. Right, well I've just picked just a little bit of rhubarb just from this one bed here. The bed that I've got over there I'm going to leave um, until um, I get there. If you do pick your rhubarb earlier, like I am, you'll tend to find that it's not quite as sweet as it would be. Um, not that it's a really sweet thing anyway, it's always quite sort of sharp, but um, it's as the season goes on it tends to get uh, sweeter and June and July tend to be, um, it's, it's usually slightly sweeter than it is at any other time but you know just add some um, honey or sugar or ginger or whatever you know uh, just to make it slightly more interesting so I've got a nice I don't know if I can hold it all actually a nice little bundle oh, oh dear me there we've got it all there we are a nice little bundle uh, there's some skinny ones uh, and then there's some lovely huge big fat ones um, so for the first rhubarb of the season um, I'm really quite impressed uh, when I get over to the other um, bed over there uh, then uh, then I'll pick some more but um, I most probably won't well, hopefully I've managed to get over there by um, next week sometime I'm hoping got lots of weeding to do um, so um, I'll just uh, clear the rest of this bed from any weeds um, and then I think that will most probably be it for the day um, so I'm glad I've got the cabbages in sorting this out and then um, now it's just a load more weeding and some more beds to prepare for the rest of the the bits and pieces that are in there to um, to go in 
Well, um, that's going to be it for today, I think. Um, I hope you've found what I've shown you useful and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye bye.